Unreal, President Trump issues major plan to end welfare as we know it, no president has done this. President Trump has set his sights on another problem he wants Congress to take up after they finish with tax reform, now it's welfare reform. Trump says that welfare is a good program, but that he wants to weed out those who are taking advantage of the system. Liberal Democrats in Congress will squeal like pigs the moment changes are offered up in a bill. In 2013, a study was conducted and when you add up all the government giveaways that a recipient can collect, you would make more on welfare than actually holding a job. Tanner and Hughes, writing for Forbes found the following. The current welfare system provides such a high level of benefits that it acts as a disincentive for work. Welfare currently pays more than a minimum wage job in 35 states, even after accounting for the earned income tax credit, which offers extra subsidies to low-income workers who take work. In 13 states, welfare pays more than $15 per hour. Taking that into consideration, is it any wonder no one ever moves from welfare to work? which was the original tenant of the bill creating the program. Someone collecting welfare can also get HUD to help pay for your rent, HEAP to pay for your electricity, Medicaid to pay for your healthcare needs and food stamps. Even if someone wanted to leave welfare and go to work, it would many times be a major sacrifice to do so. So, if we eliminate the cheating that exists in the welfare program, we could use that money to create a system where it becomes easier for people to leave welfare for work. A single mother cannot afford a babysitter to watch her kid while she works. If that is a major impediment, which it certainly is, then we may need to provide welfare. In the long run, the amount of money saved could be quite substantial. One of the main areas of concern is the food stamp program. Bill Clinton signed a welfare bill during his presidency that required work in exchange for food stamps for able-bodied people. Barack Obama did away with that, but since President Trump was sworn in, he has allowed states to revive their workfare programs, the results have been dramatic, to say the least. Thirteen previously exempted Alabama counties saw an 85% drop in food stamp participation after work requirements were put in place on January 1 according to the Alabama Department of Human Resources. From Louder with Crowder Similar changes were implemented in select counties in Georgia and by the end of the first three months, the number of adults receiving benefits in three participating counties dropped 58 percent, according to the Georgia Public Policy Foundation. In October 2014, the page announced that able-bodied adults would have to find work spend 20 hours per week in a work program, or perform community service for 6 hours a week. Food stamp participation declined 14.5% from 235,771 in January 2014 to 201,557 in January 2015, according to the state. Liberals will tell you that forcing able-bodied persons to work is cruel and unusual punishment which means everyone holding a job is a victim. But the truth is, there are reasons why food stamp recipients drop out of the program. Someone working off the books would qualify for food stamps because they have no documented income. Also, there is little enforcement in the food stamp program to weed out fraud, therefore most cheats can easily get away with it. Work is good for the soul and the self-esteem. We don't see a downside to this.